caring for our seniors. It's a political talking point that every politician has made, and it's a question that every person at some point begins to ask about their own families. But what is the current state of long-term care facilities in Pennsylvania? These facilities were in the spotlight throughout COVID-19, but what are the challenges that they face and what does the future look like? We're joined tonight by Zach Schamberg to break down those questions and more. That's all coming up right here, right now. I'm Sam Chen and this is Face the Issues. Good evening and welcome to Face the Issues. I'm Sam Chen. Caring for seniors is something that we're familiar with. Every politician talks about it. And for most of us, at some point in our lives, we begin to have that conversation with our own family. Zach Schamberg serves as CEO and president of the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, and he is on the front lines of this issue, and he joins us tonight. Zach, welcome to Face the Issues. Sam, thanks for having me and thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely. It is our pleasure to have you with us. Before we get started, Zach, how are you and your family doing? We're doing very, very well. We're emerging from the pandemic, just like our members on the front lines are. Uh, we have a 16 month old at home. We're welcoming our second daughter in just a few months. So we are doing very well here in Harrisburg. Oh, well, that's exciting. Congratulations to you. Okay. Thank you. Zach, let, let's, you know, before we're going to get into a lot of content here, but I want to start with, I think, just some basic understanding for our viewers. You are the CEO and president of the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association. Now, healthcare is a big thing, and there's a lot of associations the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, there are nurses associations, doctor associations. What is it that you and your organization do day in and day out? So we're a statewide advocacy organization. We're located here in Harrisburg, just two blocks from the Capitol building. And we represent long-term care in Pennsylvania. That's nursing homes, that's personal care homes, and that's assisted living communities. We represent those providers. We represent the frontline workers, our healthcare heroes. And most importantly, Sam, we represent the residents in those facilities and in those communities. You asked what we do. We're really the conduit between the front lines of long-term care and those in state government, our elected leaders, the governor, the Department of Health, and the Department of Human Services. And especially throughout the past 16 months and since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, I can't recall a time when our role as that conduit was more important. Yeah, that's the in many ways, both the tragic and the, the great thing about these situations where it suddenly brings the importance of the work that you do back into the spotlight. Um, tragic that it takes something like that to do that, but certainly reminds us that every day with or without the pandemic, our senior citizens, those in these homes, as well as those who serve them are, are of vital importance. Z well, that's, Zach, a, that's, go ahead. Yeah, and, and that's, a, that's exactly right. And I would just add, when you look around the state of Pennsylvania, there are 695 total nursing homes. There's 1,200 assisted living communities and personal care homes. These facilities and communities care for more than 120,000 people, and they employ almost 150,000 people. Pennsylvania is the third oldest state in the entire country, and our fastest growing demographic is age 85 and older. So when we talk about long-term care and when we talk about this system, as I'm sure we will today, we need to ensure that we can't forget about these providers and these workers and these residents. We need to make sure they're supported and that this is a sustainable system moving forward. Yeah, I appreciate those statistics and it certainly sets the, the tone for the conversation. Zach, the other question I want to ask is, what constitutes a long-term care facility? I think a lot of us have heard that term or that abbreviation LTC. You mentioned nursing homes, assisted living, but what constitutes something to be long-term care? Yeah, so when we look at nursing homes today in Pennsylvania, and really throughout the country, that's where you'll find 24 seven care for our seniors. You go to assisted living communities and personal care homes, and that's basically a step down, not necessarily 24 seven care, but folks who need help with activities of daily living or ADLs, medication, so on and so forth. 
Okay, understood. Um, and to your point, there are you know combined almost 2,000 of these facilities across the state serving 120,000 individuals. Now, I know the pandemic certainly put a spotlight on a lot of the financial stresses on organizations like yours and, and those that you represent. Uh, but the pre-pandemic was not without problems as well, including funding, whether it's Medicaid or Medicare or so forth. Walk us through some of the challenges that your members face. And that's such an important point, Sam. And you really can't talk about the state of long-term care without looking to your point pre-pandemic. By way of background, when we talk about our state's nursing homes specifically, we're talking about a provider group that receives more than 70% of its reimbursement for all care provided from the state's Medicaid program. The challenge is this is also a Medicaid program that has been flat funded for almost seven years. So while healthcare costs for providers rise every year, on average by about two and a half percent, the reimbursement rate remains the same. Think about this, in 2019, the year before the COVID-19 pandemic, average operating margins for long-term care providers were fixed at negative 2.4%, negative 2.4%. And before the pandemic, we saw the results of that taking place. We saw nursing facilities selling or changing ownership or reorganizing. And that's a pattern not unlike one we've seen in other states. And in those states, there's a next step. And unfortunately, that next step is closures. I talked about our footprint. I talked about the aging demographics in Pennsylvania a few minutes ago. We can't afford to have closures in the third oldest state in the entire country when it comes to long-term care. Yeah. Let's, let's, paint, uh, let's paint that picture here um, and, and the gravity of it. What happens if these facilities begin to close? Well, I think it's important for your viewers to understand because it, it's hard to talk to someone in Pennsylvania who doesn't have a connection or, or who doesn't know someone who's been impacted by long-term care. Now, what could happen if facilities begin to shut down? What could happen if providers leave Pennsylvania and go to another state? It would mean that care could potentially be in jeopardy for our aging population. And your grandmother, your grandfather, your mother or father, instead of going into your neighborhood and, be, and being able to be admitted into a nursing home, personal care home or an assisted living community, you could have to travel hundreds of miles to receive care. And again, we can't let that happen here in Pennsylvania. Yeah, and especially to your point, I mean, this is such a vast state um, and uh, for, you know, from, from east to west and to have to travel hundreds of miles for care, uh, I, that's something I think that hits home for every person watching. Zach, I want to ask you about the pandemic. Obviously, the pandemic put stresses on a lot of different organizations. You just mentioned that there were financial issues and challenges facing your members before the pandemic. We all saw the news stories during the pandemic about the challenges and in many ways, your members becoming a political football in the debate over COVID-19. How has that, what has that situation been like over that last year, that last 16 months um, from your perspective? Well, you know, it's interesting. So first I'll address the political football. And for better or worse, as you know, Sam, we, we live in a highly political environment today. And here, here's what I would say about that. Throughout the pandemic, the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association hosted four briefing calls for members of our General Assembly here in Harrisburg. And we invited everyone to hear about the challenges that this industry is facing. It was the House, it was the Senate, it was Republicans and Democrats. And that's because we don't see the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, especially on our senior population, as a one-party issue. We didn't even see it as a single chamber issue, the House or the Senate only. We believe that protecting our elders, our senior citizens, our frontline workers should transcend party lines. It should be bipartisan or nonpartisan. We thought this was someone, something everyone should know and certainly everyone could support. And I'm sure we'll talk about the state budget later, but we saw it in this year's budget. It was a bipartisan effort where Republicans and Democrats came together to support long-term care. 
you asked about the pandemic, and I would just highlight one other financial strain. During 2020, long-term care providers spent an estimated $1.4 billion on COVID-19-related costs, PPE or personal protective equipment, testing for staff and residents, hero pay or hazard pay for staff. By the end of this year, we estimate that that number is going to climb to $2.4 billion. Right now, as we look back at the past 16 months, after fighting for support, after fighting for prioritization, we're looking to the months ahead and we're thinking about sustainability. After all that we've been through in long-term care, are we going to be able to continue caring for our residents moving forward? And in the second segment, Zach, we're going to get into some of the solutions and some of the things you've been fighting for. But quickly, what is the outlook from where you sit right now? You know, as we look past the state budget this year, again, we have to ensure that long term care providers, workers and most importantly, our residents are prioritized. We're looking at emerging or reemerging from the pandemic and ensuring sustainability now is the time to have that larger long-term conversation about what it's going to take to invest in long-term care. Because providers are worried, workers are worried, the family members of our residents are worried about the months ahead. The, P the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association wants to be at the forefront of that discussion, and we wanna make sure that, that this is a sustainable system. Sure, Zach, thank you so much for that breakdown. Uh, when we come back, I want to start addressing solutions, things that you and your organization are fighting for in ways that even the community might be able to come together and help. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Face the Issues. Zach, thank you again for joining us. Thank you again for breaking down uh, an issue that really affects everyone across the state, not just our senior citizens. I want to turn towards solutions. And obviously, there are legislative solutions. That's probably the first thing that we think of. You painted a, a picture where we have facilities who are doing work that's important, doing work that's necessary, and they're on the front lines. I think the pandemic showed that. You also painted a picture where if we don't fix it, we are going to run into a significant funding issue that will lead to shutdown of these institutions, and that will impact families that have to now travel hundreds of miles for care. Everybody gets impacted. What are some of the things you and your organization hope to see from the state legislature or even perhaps from, from Congress? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and it's really not what we hope to see, but it's what we're advocating for, what we're working with members of the General Assembly on. One of the things that we didn't really get to speak about during your first segment is workforce and the workforce needs in long-term care. I think it's important to note that as every industry, not just in Pennsylvania, but nationwide, is dealing with a workforce crisis or a workforce shortage. This is not new to long-term care. In fact, in the summer of 2019, our then Auditor General published a report entitled, Who Will Care for Mom and Dad? And what it exposed was really the flaw in this system that there would not be enough direct caregivers to care for our aging population in the years ahead. So we need to address that first and foremost. So we're focused on workforce here in Harrisburg, and we're trying to build back our pipeline so that Pennsylvania is going to be equipped with the workforce necessary to care for our seniors in long-term care. One thing I'd highlight is that last year, every member of the General Assembly voted to enact what's called the temporary nurse aid position in nursing homes. And they ensured that those aid, aides could then transition to full-time employment as CNAs or certified nurse assistants. So we were forced to get creative and the General Assembly as well as the governor stepped, us, stepped up to help us with that. We just had some really good news this week working with Senator Lisa Boscola to enact legislation that would compel Pennsylvania to join the Nurse Licensure Compact so that providers can recruit workers from out of state. Again, we need to find ways legislatively or regulatory or on the regulatory side to ensure that we're going to have a robust workforce moving forward in long-term care. 
And Zach, what I appreciate about the approach that you've taken and your answer just now is I think oftentimes, you know this, you've been you spent a career in government, as have I, and I think oftentimes when these issues are broached, the, the gut response, the knee-jerk response is, well, we'll just put more money at it, uh, put more funding on it. And what I appreciate is a very thoughtful approach that addresses an actual issue and proposes solutions. Funding is important, and we're gonna turn there here in a moment, but that proposes a solution that solves the problem as opposed to simply just adding more money into it. And so um, I, I deeply appreciate that response. But as you know, funding is important. And we talked about the challenges of Medicaid funding before the pandemic. On top of now, some of the funding challenges that the pandemic has brought, as you said, billions of dollars spent on PPE. This is something that nursing homes are facing, hospitals are facing, health clinics are facing. What is it that you are working toward? What do you want to see done as far as funding goes? Or what needs to be done as far as funding goes? Well, again, in this year's state budget, we saw the General Assembly and Governor Wolf make a historic investment in long-term care. They did something that we have been advocating for since the beginning of the pandemic. They supported our providers, our workers, and our residents, and they prioritized our providers, our workers, and our residents. But looking long-term, to your point, Sam, it is really this simple. We need a long-term investment in our long-term care system. And looking back on the last 16 months, it, I have to ask, what did we expect? A system that relies on government reimbursement that hasn't seen an increase in that reimbursement for the better part of the last decade becomes the epicenter of the worst global pandemic in more than 100 years. What did we expect to happen to that system? The past 16 months have exposed those flaws. And again, we need to make providers, our workers, and our seniors the priority moving forward. And we say that acknowledging Pennsylvania's fiscal reality, because we have to. Year after year, we unfortunately have had a budget deficit in this state, but we can't continue to underfund this system while at the same time expecting to care for new residents and more residents who desperately need that care. We need to invest. Let me ask you about the budget that just passed, uh, a budget that was passed on time or almost a rarity in this state anymore. But the, f the bulk of the funding for the uh, Pennsylvania Healthcare Association and for the work for the healthcare long term care facilities comes from the American Rescue Plan. It's federal stimulus dollars, for lack of a better phrase. That is a one time f investment. That is not something that is renewed every year in the budget. This is a one time thing. And it's coming out of the fact that the federal government recognized after COVID-19, a lot of organizations and companies needed some help to, get, to make up the differences and get back into business. That funding goes away in the next budget. It's a one-time allocation. What are your concerns going into the next budget? I know we just finished one budget season, but what are your concerns going into the next budget season? What is it that you would like the legislators to do as far as that funding going forward? Yeah, again, it's about that long-term investment. And when we talk about the American Rescue Plan, which industry, not just in Pennsylvania, but throughout the entire country, needed to be rescued more than long-term care throughout the COVID-19 pandemic? We knew that this year we were looking at one-time funding. We knew that this was about survival for long-term care providers, for workers, for residents through the next 12 months. and we worked with the General Assembly to ensure that we could survive for the next year so that we could purchase personal protective equipment and testing for our staff and residents and continue to invest in our workers and the care that we provide. But again, we need to have that, that larger conversation, excuse me, and we need to talk about long term. What are we going to do to ensure that this is a sustainable system? not just for the next 12 months, but for the next 12 years. Mm -hmm. To your point, it's, you know, they always say you don't fix a roof when it's raining. Uh, and we've seen the leak. And now that it's some, we've got some duct tape on it, if you will, it's time to actually fix the problem looking forward. Zach, let me ask you this. We talked about uh, practical solutions. We talked about the workforce development question. We talked about the funding side of it. 
Is there a place for non-government entities in this conversation? I'm thinking community, the community groups, uh, or even businesses as potentially as partners. Is there a place for these non-government organizations or non-government entities in this conversation? And what is their place? How do people in the community or businesses help our seniors and help your members? It's a great question. Our long-term care providers serve the community and they create their own communities in their facilities. They not only care for seniors, but they also serve as an economic driver for those communities. You know, we started this interview, and I told you that nearly 150,000 Pennsylvanians work in our long-term care facilities and communities throughout the state. We need community support, and throughout the pandemic, we have needed community support. And I could give you example after example of other associations, other businesses, and other industries stepping up to help long-term care, whether it was with PPE, whether it was with testing, whether it was with deliveries. Other businesses and other industries came together to help our heroes on the front lines and those seniors in need. I think we need to preserve that partnership moving forward and work together. I think it's a fantastic answer and a reminder of the, the best of humanity that came forward during that time. Zach, last question, um, your outlook looking ahead. I mean, obviously we address problems, we address solutions. What is your outlook on the entire situation moving forward? Well, I think again, in this year's state budget, we saw members of the General Assembly, we saw our elected leaders as well as our governor come together in a bipartisan fashion and really prioritize and support this industry. On that or using that and utilizing that momentum, we need to have the broader conversation about how do we make this a sustainable model moving forward in Pennsylvania. I think we're in a good position to do that. We are seeing providers, we're seeing workers, we're seeing residents and their families reemerge from the pandemic. And I think we're gonna reemerge even stronger than before. And I know you will be a Tyler's advocate for exactly that. So Zach, thank you for joining us. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Face the Issue. Zach, thank you again for joining us. Uh, as we close out, we we'll always want to take a moment for our viewers to get to know the guests as themselves. And you and I, we, I said earlier, we both have a, a background in government and politics. Um, talk with us a little bit about your political background and what, how did that bring you to where you are today? Yeah, of course. So I grew up in Westchester, right outside of the city of Philadelphia. I went to Ursinus College in Montgomery County. Uh, during my time at Ursinus, I went to intern for then Congressman Pat Toomey, who was going to be running for U.S. Senate. And two weeks after I graduated Ursinus, I went to work for an assistant Montgomery County DA who was running to be a state representative. His name is Todd Stevens. Two weeks after graduating, I became his campaign manager in that race. We won that race. I then became his chief of staff. I ran one more of his campaigns. And I am really proud to say, no thanks to me, by the way, that Representative Stevens is still serving his constituents in the state house today. Yeah, he is. And, and, and fant a fantastic person, I might add. Um, the, you know, this, obviously your political background has given you the tools to do the work that you do now and the connections and, and the understanding of how Harrisburg runs, which sometimes feels like you need a calculus degree to figure out um, and the, that, that whole budget process. But your why, this is also personal for you in many ways, the work you do now. And as you said from the onset, this is something that is personal for most families throughout the state. We all know some of the oftentimes someone in our own family who is impacted by long-term care or needs long-term care. But this for you is a personal thing. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that and what motivates you every day to do what you do? Yeah, of course. It's a personal, it's a personal uh, mission for me for a few reasons. I joined the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association in 2014, and it was really a natural fit my mother, my aunt, my cousin are nurses. My mother and stepfather have worked in long-term care all my life. It's funny, I used to hear about the challenges that I've outlined today at the dinner table every day. And I never really understood those issues until I was able to see our caregivers and the residents who we represent up close. And I, I got to see what 
they were experiencing and what they were combating each and every day. But to your point, Sam, it really became a natural fit for me because a few years ago, my grandfather became a resident in long-term care. He had been diagnosed with dementia and he was living at home with my grandmother. And there were days when he began to wander or he would leave the stove on. And we just couldn't maintain his safety at home anymore. So we had to make the difficult decision to admit him into a nursing home and then into a personal care home. So I understand that decision that thousands or tens of thousands of Pennsylvania's families have had to make. So while I certainly speak for or as a representative of PHCA and for the long-term care providers that we represent, these issues and the sustainability of this system are very, very personal for me. And I'm very proud to do what I do. Yeah, and I, as we often say on the show, it's a it's a really a national issue that impacts every community across the country. So we thank you for the work that you do, Zach, and of course for joining us here today. Thank you for having me. And it's our pleasure, Zach Schamberg, again from the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, and that is our show for tonight. We want to thank you for tuning in, and we hope you'll join us right here next week. Until then, my name is Sam Chan. On behalf of all of us here at Face the Issues, thank you and good night.